31 degrees at 816. Good morning, Scott Watson in downtown Holland. Gary Stevens in the newsroom, and we are joined this morning by Congressman Fred Upton. Good morning, Congressman. How are you today? Hey, it's still Fred. Good morning. Fred, can you hear me okay? I can. Perfect. How are you today? Oh, great. Now I just lost the connection. Hold on. Sorry, I hit the wrong button. That's okay. It's just a video. We can <laughs> still we can still hear you. We just can't hear you. There. Know. How I'm about back. that? I'm back. Well, lots going on in your world, to be sure. Um, one of the things that I know you've spent a lot of time on and become passionate about is making sure that our airways are safe, especially as it pertains to IDs. And you've sponsored a new bill called Crime Doesn't Fly. Seems like it makes a lot of sense. Tell us about it. Well, look, we want to make sure that people, when they get on airplanes, uh, that, that they're safe. Uh, and this bill is a bipartisan. And just make sure that, in fact, all that material is given to the airlines and the TSA just to make sure that we don't have a, certainly another 9-11. I mean, we, we learned a lot from that, but we just want to make sure that when people get on planes, that they, they are who they say they are, and they've got a record that's going to be okay. Uh, they're not going to be in, in, impacted. Is this just part of a larger concern? And I know it has to do with the voting rights bills and things. It seems like this whole issue of government IDs is a lot more complex than maybe it was a dozen or so years ago. Well, you know, it really ought to be pretty simple. Uh, I've always supported uh, the uh, folks having an ID before they vote. Uh, we actually have that in Michigan. You know, that was, act, frankly, one of the problems with this well, I call HR1, the Voting Rights Act, that uh, you know failed in the Senate to get 60 votes uh, to get through the filibuster. That bill actually has a provision in there saying that states cannot have voter ID uh, when, when people go in. So it would undermine the system that we've had in place for a lot of years here in Michigan. So, uh, you know, to me, if we want free and fair elections and uh, we want to know the, the people that are actually voting, it's not a problem. You know, I believe it or not, uh, I still have to show my ID when they go buy a six pack of beer. Uh, you, you, so there's no reason why we, you shouldn't have it when I go to, the, for me, St. Joe City Hall. And when I do go to vote, they do ask for my ID and I show it to them, even though they know who I am. Nice to have you back. I mean, you're always very friendly. Got to make sure you don't campaign in, the, in, the, in a polling place. But in fact, even me, rightly so, has to show their ID uh, to get in to get my ballot. One of the other things that I think this brings up is this whole idea of the role of the federal government in regulating local elections. Is there talk about that in Washington, or is that something that's mostly talked about in various locations, understanding that fundamentally all politics are local? Well, you know, the, it's the 14th amendment to the constitution that in essence says it's the states that that decide the eligibility and participation and, and the rules uh, whether it be absentee ballots or anything else and again for our system in michigan i think it works pretty well i mean i voted in person and i voted absentee uh, i've taken my when i vote absentee as i did last november or i guess two novembers ago now i actually did take my absentee ballot and put it in the drop box immediately in front of the saint joe city hall which has got a camera on it the police station is right there. It's safe. It, it works. They match my signature uh, to make to make sure that it worked. Uh, but there's some other legislation. So we'll see how this all, all moves forward. Uh, it's not likely that you'll see uh, the undermining of state uh, election laws, uh, particularly now that the Senate has acted. And, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're not going to see a bill literally move uh, to the president's test the balance of the year as it relates to that. But I've got some exciting news, too. I've talked to a number of my local sheriffs. You know, we've we've had situations with live shooter grills. In fact, I was at uh, a high school the, the day before Parkland a, a few years ago, and they had a live shooter grill, something that never happened when I went to St. Joe Public Schools. But we need an alert system, in essence, an amber alert system when we have that live shooter. Of course, we've had some cases. When you remember in Kalamazoo, we had the what was called the Uber shooter uh, killed six people or six people were, were shot. Uh, a number of them died. Uh, we had the uh, uh, two bailiffs, uh, uh, mm -hmm. Berrien County courthouse a number of years ago that were, were killed in the line of duty. And 
it's an important, you know, you got that alert system that goes to law enforcement and they, they swarm the, the area, but we need to make sure that, you know, as, as we saw at the synagogue in, in Texas a couple of weeks ago now, that there's an alert system that goes to like the normal Joe, uh, you and me, uh, to get out of the area. And so we're introducing bipartisan legislation today. Uh, I'm the lead Republican on it. Uh, that will, in essence, establish an Amber Alert system uh, within the Department of Justice and others so we can, we can figure this out with some resources to make sure that our communities are safe when these things happen. And we've been working with the FOP, with the sheriffs and, and others, and we're actually hoping we can get this legislation fast-tracked and have it on the House floor as early as in, in the next month or two, and we're working with the, our Senate colleagues too. So more tools in the toolbox to make sure that our communities are safe. Those would then be linked to cell phone carriers and, right. and, and media so outlets like ourselves. Got my, my phone in my hand. <laughs> so you'll get a little alert system, very much along the lines of what we did with Amber Alert uh, like 15, 20 years ago when that thing was first established. You're in a right-leaning district, a gun-carrying district. We have the Second Amendment. How do you as a legislator balance something like an active shooter alert system which is an after the fact thing with the need to protect people, given the realities of the second amendment and given the realities of how the vast majority of your constituents feel about, about guns. Well, I support the second amendment always have, uh, but this is just, I think this is more common sense that if you've got someone who's abusing that, I mean, again, this would be triggered by uh, no pun intended, but triggered by law enforcement to say that, there's a situation with a live shooter, uh, you want to send people out of the area, you know, and it just, uh, so I'm in Washington today. We've got boats uh, the rest of the week. Uh, la- last night, there was a, a, a murder, a, a shooting guy just sitting on the street in Georgetown. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he, 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 um, you know, 10, 11 o'clock, something like that at night, killed, shot and killed. The police uh, don't have a suspect, but it's important in any neighborhood that in fact, when you've got something like that, that the, 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 the immediate surrounding area, in fact, gets alerted so they can stay out of the way, take cover uh, and, uh, and, and be safe. It's just a way that we can you know, use some of the tools that, that we now have uh, to ensure the safety of, of bystanders that might be involved uh, or, or not involved in, in this certain situation. He is West Michigan Congressman Fred Upton. He joins us this morning on WHTC. My name is Scott Watson. International relations. And really what I want to ask about is not so much the Russian incursion or perhaps the pending incursion. I want to ask about the flavor and the temperament on Capitol Hill. You deal with high stakes incidents and have for your entire career. When something like what's going on on the border of Russia takes place. Is there a tension that builds in Washington or do you just wait and take things as they come? Well, there's a lot of concern. I've actually been to the Ukraine twice. Uh, I went with Kevin McCarthy, who's the Republican leader now. The house, we went on a trip with him trying to build support for Ukraine among our NATO allies. Uh, And also then I was the the chairman of the Energy and Commerce Committee to make sure that the folks knew, other countries know knew that we would be able to help supplement or offset some of that Russian gas uh, that they're relying on for energy. Uh, So we went to a number of NATO countries. Uh, I then took a trip uh, back there with members of the Energy and Commerce Committee, uh, bipartisan always, uh, just to, to again, send that signal to Ukraine. Uh, We're going to be having a classified briefing a little bit later this week that I'll be a participant in. Uh, But, you know, we, we got to stop Russia from doing this. Right. Uh, we have to send a signal to our allies that we're ready, that they we need them and they need us to try and stop this incursion that is the word imminent has been used for about two weeks. Uh, let's hope it doesn't happen and that somehow diplomacy can be uh, utilized to prevent uh, the the uh, uh, takeover of, of Ukraine through a variety of means, whether it be cyber or whether it be actual troops and, and shooting that would likely kill maybe thousands of people. Here, here. You are always grateful, uh, gracious with your time. We are grateful for that and grateful for your service. Congressman Fred Upton, thanks for the visit this morning on WHTC. You bet. Thanks.